chalky, like a little mm. bit of that sort of uh, dry, like almost licks your tongue a little bit. Have you been training? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I've been drinking wine with you guys for like three months. What are you talking about? G'day guys, welcome back for another week of Blind Tastings. Thanks so much for joining along. Uh, smash the subscribe button if you think that we're mildly entertaining and wildly educational. But of course, thank you as well to Sometimes Always, who have provided a really fun little discount that is linked into our Discord channel below in the description if you're keen on 10% off any of the wines that we taste today for a limited time only. But first, let's get into some Blind Tastings. And we're starting with white wine. Oh, this is, um, it's pretty. It's very, very pretty. I'm gonna continue the theme of guessing every white wine Chardonnay. This is Chardonnay, for sure. Yummy, yeah, I nice and flinty. It's not really, it's not really screaming anything particularly off the nose, but all it's screaming to me is that it's probably delicious. Yeah, big into this one. That's really nice. I think I mentioned it a few times. Ooh, hang on. I liked it at first, but what's that at the back end? A bit of oak, maybe. This is an overbearing. It's not not present. There's just a, a nice sort of warmth, sort of seductive effect uh, to the wine. It's, it, this is an incredibly seductive little wine. 30 to $35 I'd be happy to pay and grab three bottles of this. I think this is a good little staple. Don't know what to drink, just grab a bottle of textural white in that area. Um, but yeah, delicious. Moving on, we have a lovely luscious uh, red wine. It's quite dense and dark in color. Mmm, juicy. It smells fruity. I'm into it. I like red wines that smell like this typically. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, this smells cool. Definitely got this like rich, opulent, like dark plum, like a little bit chalky, a little bit of that uh, furry, yeah, like a bit of the tannin, a little bit of chalk coming through. It, it smells, honestly, it smells like it's got a decent whack of Cabernet. And it's very chocolatey. It's got a slight greenness to it. This goes into the category of dad wine, I reckon. It's definitely something like rich and decadent and serrari or, oh, it's really sort of crunchy, highly pixelated, uh, dense tannin. If this isn't Cabernet, I'll be surprised. Um, this is a really sort of class act example of, of this wine. 40 bucks. And again, there's another three bottles for me. Um, yeah, big fan of this wine. Uh, again, I think another sleeper, uh, like the first wine. Uh, it's got to probably not score so well, but uh, it is very deserving of, of a really good score. More reds. Mm, this doesn't smell very fruity at all. It smells, it smells like really nice cardboard. It's already giving me Pinot and Grenache vibes, just looking at the color alone. Oh, wow. This smells grapey, if you... <laughs> It's wine, obviously. Really quite juicy and bright. Ooh, I think it's got a little bit of maturation as well. A little bit of bottle age. That is pretty. That's really pretty. I'm not too sure that's Pinot. You could almost tell me that's white wine. Like, you could almost tell me that. It's really, um, it's a little bit of like sourness almost. Light red with a bit of that flavor coming through on it. And it's got a really unique little character to it. It almost feels quite bubblegummy, juicy, grapey thing. It's really fun. The aromats are incredible. Uh, really, really incredible. Very, very, very high acidity. This has been picked. I, I don't think it's been picked maybe intentionally early. I just think it's a really high acid red variety. Cool wine. Very interesting. Very unique. Very nice. This smells amazing. Mm-hmm. Is it smelling more familiar? A little bit, uh, a little bit fruitier. It's got a, there's something like a lactone type effect. I don't think this is necessarily from oak. That is delicious. That is like so, it's got this amazing like silky palate weight that then strolls into this like really like grippy Moorish tannin. Yum, 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 yum. One of the, one of the weeks so far for me, that's really cool. These are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards in a midweek setting. You notice one thing and then you notice another thing like within quick succession in your mouth. It's like a frenetic experience to drink this. Um, I think it could be potentially a bit of a blend. I think it might be a Grenache based blend of sorts. And if it's got maybe a little bit of dolcetto or maybe a little bit of a few things in there. I feel like I've said it a few times on here, but like you could give this to kids, don't, but like it's just so approachable. Fifth wine of the lineup. We're going a little bit darker, a little bit denser. Not unlike house paint in terms of smell. Um, but a good Jalux, like none of this uh, tiddlywinks uh, in the can from Bunnings. 
Definitely more on the tertiary aspect, like tobacco-y, fig leaf, um, dried herbs and all that kind of thing. So it's probably a bit more weighty and serious. This has dense tannin, very powerful, very full. It has a smell uh, that I would closely associate with New World Nebbiolo. Uh, it's not, it's not jumping out at me. It's got a little bit of that, a little bit of the chalk that I was talking about from wine number two. And it's like green cardamom all the way through. High, high tannin. It's probably Nebbiolo or something like that. I think it needs a little bit more time in bottle and then it will look really, really good. I think this is quite juvenile, quite young. I'm gonna put 35 down for it. And I'll just grab, I'll have three bottles and I wanna drink them at different times to see if anything changes about it. So I'll go three what? bots. No, it's like stemmy, herbaceous. Definitely an interesting wine. Pretty bloody delicious though. Last wine for the lineup, and it's Barocca. Almost the color of Fortified. If you've slipped a Fortified in here for the first tasting of the day, like I swear to God. Oh, this is like an old world inspired orange wine. It has just got this beautiful bergamot, burnt orange peel fragrance to it that is just a bit of gum flints. Um, it's got a burnout type aroma, so this is definitely like a rubbery um, style of wine. Brilliant wine. Love this. That wine there is incredible. That wine there is incredible. Uh, wow. Okay. Um, price. I reckon it's going to be a little bit expensive because there's obviously someone who's spent a little bit of time thinking about what they're doing here. Like it's got this beautiful tannin structure, this core of fruits, fantastic. I think this is a very good example uh, of, of when people say orange wine and the original orange wine that really hit the scene around about 10 years ago. This is what they were talking about. Uh, and it's a really crackingly good example. I'm gonna say six bottles for me because yeah, as, as I said, if I share it with mates, it'll be great. If I put it in the cellar, it'll probably be great. Um, I'm all about this. Uh, let's see what the other people say. What'd you guys think? Pretty cool. good. Pretty good yeah, to a lineup. Line yeah, it was into, into some more than others, but that's the nature of taste. But uh, yeah, cool. All right, so let's jump on wine number one. What Lock do we got, Lock? Lockie, what do we got? Ooh, price is right. Nice. Price is right. Good. I'm liking that. It is well shot. done, dude. Doyle, let's go. Big That's tick. Beaujolais Blanc Chardonnay. Yeah, I haven't sick. had a lot of Beaujolais Blanc I, before. I have had a couple. Uh, this is the cleanest I've ever seen it. Now, this is really uh, cool. Uh, next wine here, I thought um, I was leaning down uh, Cabernet, maybe a sort of a, a lower class um, Bordeaux. Oh wow. I thought uh, I thought this would be a really good deal. Locked up, what are we doing? Bargain. Boy, nice. they're on it. They are on it. Get nice. me on the prices right yeah. now. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Ooh, oh, oh, is it? It's, uh, it's, it's in the Loire Valley. It's the Loire Valley. Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. There you go. Um, uh, Chateau Pierre Bees. Schiest off, uh, I would imagine, schiest uh, based. Oh yeah, it's soil. It's uh, 15 and It's appellated, so it must be Cabernet Franc. So yeah. Cabernet Franc, very, very cool. Like it's, this. Uh, yeah. Very, very cool. All right, wine number three. This this threw me for six. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I mean, light light in nature, but high acid. High yeah. acid. acid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote Europe sour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, for sure. Surely. Fred, what do we got, Lucky? It threw us all for six. 49, 50 bucks. This guy What's just, going on? I, I can last pick. couple of weeks, man. He's, He's just been on it. Yeah, but last last week it was picking what wine it is. This time it's just price. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, cause. Yes. yes. We love these wines. We love these wines. Yeah, see? Uh, yeah. What, 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 what cause? It's It'll Nero. Be Nero. Nero de Lupo. Yeah, it's very grapey and narrow -y. Yeah, Makes sense. Sure. Lighter bodied, high acid, not mm. a lot of tannin. Uh, and uh, yeah. this is a Sicilian, so Europe. Definitely Europe. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> ah, got it. Wine number four. What do we have here? The little dough boy, doughy little number. Medium One. body, medium weight, Goldilocks style. Wine of the lineup for me. Yeah? Delicious. Delicious. Yeah, right. Cool. I also had it for 12 bottles. I had for 12 bottles as well. I had oh. 12 bottles. This is the Yeah! Straight perfection. What do we got? Dude, Dude, Dude that's so Dude. good. That is, is so it? good. That is drinking well for days. Stefano Lubiana, Pinot. Pinot. Hell yeah. That is excellent Man, stuff. Hell yeah. Well, Primavera. well done. 2020 Pinot. Utterly fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. The first like, clean sweep, well deserved as well. That yeah, is absolutely. Yeah, line. one of the wines in the show so far. How good. I am stoked. I am stoked. All right, moving on to the, the final wine, which I do believe has maybe an Italian bent to it. Yeah. Okay. All right, what do we got, Lucky? Because I've got Neb vibes on this one. Ah, Whoa. yeah. The streak had to end. What do we got? Ooh, hello. 
Oh, this is new. What is this? This is yeah. new. Vino Rosso. Vino Rosso. So Italian, of course. Mag Maggiorina. Um, I am. I am. Com I have. N I have no idea what this is. It's well an Nebbiolo blend. Well done. Yes. Beautiful. There we go. It's a Nebbiolo. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. Once again, why we like good. it. The the final wine. Final yeah. wine. For me, wine of light up. I have an appreciation for the style of this. It's it is weird. It's gonna throw people for six. I, I still wanted six bottles and I thought it was about sixty-five bucks. Wanted twelve and I thought about I, I stretched to Whoa. eighty. Yeah, no, I wanted oh, I wanted twelve and I thought it was fifty-five. Sixty. Yeah, new. There we're we back. go. We're back. He's back on it. You gotta drink it quickly though, you're not wrong. That is mouse as got? hell right now. It's Ooh. not Radicon. It's not Radicon. No, we're talking about Toscana. We're probably talking about um, uh, Malvasia and uh, Treviano. Wow. wow. Excellent. Wow. Delicious, delicious so, wine. Definitely looking at it, I'm gonna say it is a pretty hands-off producer and a decent amount of maturation on it as well. You what delicious. a fun, very lineup. Line yeah. And absolutely, we have the first, the first clean, clean, sweet, sweet wine. Congratulations. Stefano Lubiano, Primavera, 2020 Pinot Noir. Sub, yep. sub, <laughs> sub $50. Very cool. Sub $50 Pinot Noir from Tassie that is exceptional. Yep. Get, that is, get as much as you can. That Ooh, is jeepers. That is dope. That is dope. See you next time, guys. So good. See you next time. Ciao.